Hi everyone, we're going to talk about our uh, textile quality analysis project and I like showing these because it actually helps you to see what you're going to be doing and pictures are better than words. This particular analysis I've saved for about the last 10 years. Um, it was so um, fun that she included all of these little decorations. She actually was a fashion design student. She went on to Pratt and she actually works for Tommy Hilfiger today. So it's very exciting to see um, her develop as, from a student to a professional position. And um, just knowing she went to Pratt, a very good school in Brooklyn. And um, when she went there, they actually took our one textile course and she got credit for both textiles one and textiles two because I include everything as you've come to know. Um, in this analysis, you're going to be looking at three different levels of quality in fabric. She created t-shirts out of this different material. And when I asked her, you know, did you go out and buy, you know, a quarter yard of each of these? She said no, she cut her boyfriend's t-shirts apart. I'm sure he didn't appreciate that unless they were going to the uh, rag bag. Um, we now have his t-shirts here forever. Uh, she knew though, because of the t-shirt, she knew the maker, she knew what quality level um, that was in, and so she was able to talk about the quality from a Walmart to a Macy's to a Ralph Lauren. So three different levels of price points but also three different levels of quality. I think what you're going to find in this project is that sometimes the better fabric is the better choice. And it's very interesting when we look at Target and some of Tar Target's fabrics, oftentimes they literally are better than our best fabric that we're showing from a high-end uh, vendor. Um, and it's because Target uh, knows that one mistake with fabric is going to cost millions of dollars and so they actually would rather take off a pocket and put in a little bit better fabric for the price because the customer is demanding when it comes to the quality of fabric, um, especially at Target. But Penny's does the same thing. Uh, Walmart is starting to be very cognizant of their uh, textile products too. All right, the next one I'm going to show you kind of fun and, and these help. I think to be able to see what students have done creative wise will really help you and, and inspire you um, rather than to just put up a piece of fabric and try to talk about it. This gives you uh, kind of a fun project to work on. She did this with sheeting and I said did you tear up each of these sheets and she said what she did is buy a different um, Pillowcase. Well, pillowcases, as you know, can be very, very expensive, but she was, I think she went to Home Goods and was able to get three different levels there. Um, I don't want you to have to go out and buy things, nor do I want you to ruin what you have at home. Um, so I'll talk about different projects as we go through these. Uh, representing good, better, and best price points, as well as construction of the fabric. Here, these are all woven materials. She wrote about them underneath here talked about the, the fabric component, and these were all fabrics that were already made. She's not designing them, she's going to talk about the quality, the price point, um, and because you're either having fabric that has a price point or um, a item, a garment or a sheet that has a price point, you're going to know just by the cost of it that it may run in one of these areas. Dollar store is always really good, and you'll see some of those projects later on, but here she used sheeting and created these nice little Barbie pillows. The good thing if you're doing these at home, you can use your own. If you're in class, you have to buy and bring in new ones. <laughs> but uh, this was a fun project. I've had people not just do boxers or underwear, but um, t-shirts and things like that. Uh, this student happened to leave it and we, it's been a good example for us. Information carried here, you can put all of that on separate. You can do good, better, and best on separate frames within your PowerPoint. Um, but you can see here that she talked about uh, not the construction of how this is made, but the fabric itself. Because you can see they each have different types of elastic and waistbanding put on, but we weren't talking about that. What we're talking about is the quality of the fabric itself, from one that's more expensive to the least expensive, um, 
and really talking about the way these are knitted, the weight of it, and just even by hand, it's inspection. So that is something that you can do with any garment that you have at home. The one thing I want to caution you here is, please make sure that the content is all the same. If it's 95% cotton and 5% spandex or elastane, which we've learned is the same um, fiber, you want to make sure that they're all the same. We're going to compare apples to apples like you would do in any kind of lab experiment. I wanted to show something with uh, pure fabrics that were purchased at a quarter of a yard at Joann's. And it's very easy there to know what is good, better, best because of what you're going to pay just for that quarter yard. No longer do they give you a nice big sample, they're going to have you buy um, a short piece of that. Uh, many of you um, are in our sewing classes and you already have a nice stash of fabric at your house. Um, if you can remember the price points and all of the, the information about that fabric, uh, please feel free to use what you already have. She had a fabric and this particular one was the least expensive, moderate price calico, and then a more expensive um, sateen weave here. The weave definitely makes a difference because you can see this one has a bit of shine to it, but definitely they're all woven and the yarns are what are going to make a, uh, quite a bit of difference here if we disregarded the print. So this is the way, and she actually made these up into little dresses, so you know for sure I grabbed this and asked her if we could keep it for an example. Sometimes it really helps to see what other students have done. It helps get our brains going, at least it does for me. And this is a project that I wanted to show because she also used fabric from a fabric store. Although the project was to use three pieces of fabric, she actually used four, and so I'm going to tell you a little bit about why. Um, this, we, these are all 100% cotton. They are, um, there's no stretch in these, so these are all cotton. And they're all different weights and different types of uh, levels of indigo. So this one has been washed uh, completely through, where these are in the original heavy indigo dye. The interesting thing about her fourth piece of fabric is that this is a digital print. And if you look at that on the front, you can see these twill lines. And the color, it all looks like denim. But we know with prints, when we turn them over, they are definitely that paler or white on the back. And so here you can see that this is printed. So we have a printed denim here. And I thought that was fun that she included that because printing definitely is less expensive than creating these denims that have the indigo dye. So this is something that, that uh, was very inexpensive and probably not desirable for us that love denim, blue denim jeans um, because it is a very lightweight cotton, uh, but it, goes, it gives you the example of how print differs from these that are actually um, a twill weave of indigo with the uh, white weft yarns. Last but not least, and it's in keeping with our fall, we've got a Halloween um, item here. These are actually toweling. I've had students, and this one I don't have them now because we usually use the leftover washcloths to wipe our boards off here in the classroom, but now we're not in the classroom, so I will show you one that is still put together. These were taken from different types of towels, um, all 100% cotton. Um, these, have, these are dyed. This particular one is printed. So that, that's why I wanted to use this to point out if you're comparing, it's so much easier to do your comparison um, if they all three have the same process. So they're all dyed rather than one that's printed. So just keep that in mind that we want to keep apples to apples. And what we're looking for is the difference that comes from the yarns, the weight of the uh, total weight of the fabric itself, because usually the more yarn that's used, and this is a much denser terry cloth than this one, the more yarn we use, the more expensive that terry cloth becomes. Uh, printing, in some cases, can be less expensive than the dyeing, and also with printing, sometimes you lose a lot of absorbency. So when you're comparing, compare all three printed towels or all three that are dyed in different levels. 
I hope these examples give you an idea of what our project can look like. Of course, you know I always allow for creativity and your creative license um, is important to me. So know that you can do your project in any way that you'd like, but definitely um, this should give you uh, some examples to get started.